Hello, and welcome to another installment of the Redefine the Hustle podcast. I'm your host, Suze, a growth mindset and productivity coach, supporting music industry professionals who want to get rid of the overwhelm and back to doing what they love with clarity and confidence. This week's guest is Joshua Ansley, and his credits are almost too many to mention. He is an artist and author and a self-proclaimed spiritual midwife. We go deep in this one, discussing spirituality, recovery from addiction, and the intertwined role failures and successes play in finding your purpose. Now, Joshua Ansley's career has been as diverse as his musical tastes and styles. He was the original bass player for Streetlight Manifesto on their debut album, Everything Goes Numb, and made his Victory Records debut with Catch-22 on the underground favorite, Keysby Nights. As a Capitol Records recording artist in the band Hurt, he found a smoother, more mature style. Joshua has also been main support on arena tours with Alice in Chains, Stained, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, Seether, Army of Anyone, The Stone Temple Pilots, and Filter Supergroup, and many more. He's now working on his own project, The Least of Thieves, as lead singer, bassist, and guitarist with members of all of his previous projects. The power and style of The Least of Thieves is indicative of the wide range of flavors that he's come to enjoy while touring places like London, Mexico, not to mention all over the U.S. Joshua has always loved storytelling and has a BFA from Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University where he studied abroad at the London Academy of Theatre at the Globe. He has written, produced, and directed his own play, written in iambic pentameter, as well as several short films, most recently directing a music video for The Human Zoo. Now, his love for storytelling has also made him an author as he recently completed his soon-to-be-released book, Fuck God, The Spiritual Guide for Assholes, Atheists, and Intellectuals. Now, we dive into that a bit more in our discussion, so stay tuned. In addition, he has studied various spiritual modalities for over 20 years, including yoga, mandactic philosophy, Christianity, and Mayan shamanism, with over 500 registered hours as a yoga teacher. He is also the spiritual advisor for a dual diagnostic addiction behavior health recovery center after working through deep levels of his own addictions and traumas. Now I'm going to keep us moving because this is a hefty conversation. So let's jump right into our discussion. Here is Joshua Ansley. Joshua, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I can't wait to dig in. The first thing I want to start off with being that this is the Redefine the Hustle podcast is how do you define hustle and where do you see creatives getting it wrong? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I love the whole concept of like redefining the hustle um, because I feel like I love the whole con- concept of redefining everything we look at <laughs> and how we're, un- we're understanding because so much of it is just based on what we're given. Right. In my own life, when I was really hitting certain bottoms in my life and people you know, uh, asked me about defining success you know, because I felt like I was a failure. And so even defining what success is, because there's this idea of like, when you want success as badly as you want to breathe, that's when you'll have it, right? But at what cost? I mean, what are you what are you really compromising and sacrificing in order to get that? And I think that there's a much bigger picture than just, just push, 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 drive, 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 drive until you break, you know? And I've worked with a lot of people in my life that I've actually advised to, you know, there was somebody that I was working with that I advised to stop training for a marathon. I never thought I would do Mm. that to tell somebody to basically, you know, because of, because of my own preconceived notions of, and these ideas of that's giving up, you know, and, but I realized that the reasons why we're doing these things in the first place is so important. So the reason why this person was training for the marathon was that she never felt that she was enough. Mm. I had never felt that it was enough. So if, if we're coming from a place of lack in our drive and our motivation, and we're trying to prove something, which we never know that we are when we're doing that, right? Then I feel like you're coming from an empty place. My whole goal is to, in redefining the hustle, is like getting back to a space of wholeness and completeness within myself. And if I knew I were whole, healed, and complete, then what action would I take from there? And then I might be able to, quote unquote, hustle in a much more effective, efficient way. Yes. And, and it would be totally different. Maybe I wouldn't be doing anything that I thought I wanted to do anymore because now that from a space of wholeness and completeness, what actually drives me forward to take action in the first place? Or I might do the same exact things, but from a completely different space. It's like 
before enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. After enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. If that answers the question. 100%. And I think that that's such a powerful answer because it, you know, makes me think, you know, our goals are really about the internal rather than the external. As you said, it wasn't about the marathon. It was about what they were hoping the marathon gave to them, which was to feel Mm -hmm. enough. And you know, Danielle Laporte talks about this a lot. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but with her desire map, you know, it's about, we forget the journey. It's yes, goals are important. Yes, it's it's good to set milestones and check in with yourself and, you know, challenge yourself to reach certain points in your life when something really matters to you. But you also, it's hard to stay motivated if that whole time you're just suffering. You have to decide what is it, what's mm-hmm. the internal reason or why that is making you create this goal and as you said if it's if it's to feel enough well you can do things on the way to training to that marathon to feel enough and you might decide yeah I don't need to keep training I actually have already started to feel enough and that doesn't mean that whether you do the marathon or not it doesn't mean you're a quitter you've achieved Mm -hmm. what you set out to achieve yeah, I, I hope that at some point I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, when I thought I thought about this and I was like, I w- would love to see her maybe one day go back to running a marathon, mm-hmm. you know, but from a from a place where exactly like we're talking about from that space of coming at it from a from a different perspective and for a different reason. Right. Right. Know? Yeah, because sometimes if we, you know, yes, pushing is necessary sometimes to get yourself over a hurdle. But if it's more of a detriment to you than that goal really doesn't achieve what it, you wanted it to achieve. Well, I, I mean, I had what a lot of people would consider a lot of success. Mm-hmm. You know, I never really got it monetarily, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I think that that was a big thing in my life. And I still I still don't, <laughs> I still don't have it. And it was like, but there's, there's never right. enough anyway, right. you know. And so like I, when it was like redefining what this success was, it, it, you know, I had to give up everything to actually come back to the space of being able to pursue it again from a space of wholeness and completeness. You know, it's funny because I had this incredible spiritual awakening 20 years Mm. ago and it was like, wow, we found a purpose. Like, well, how amazing is that? My purpose was to be of service through my artistry. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I have to be of service through my artistry. And then I had all these amazing successes and record contracts and all this kind of cool stuff. And was like, oh, here it is. It's happening. Even though I was just like drinking and drugging and doing ever the whole time anyway. Right. And I'd fallen off this like, quote unquote, spiritual path that I was following, but thought I was still on it. And it wasn't until I had kind of lost everything and lost my own self that I was coming back to it and looking at it and going, well, now I feel like I failed as an artist. I, you know, I'm a filmmaker as well, and I moved to Mexico to make this film, and it was like not happening, and I felt like I a complete mm-hmm. failure. And it was like I thought that my deepest sense of self was my artistry and my success within the artistry. And that was a huge awakening for me to recognize that there was something well beyond that, that I had to find out something beyond that so that when I failed, quote-unquote, failed in my artistry, then what was I really, who was I really, if, if not an artist? Because I thought that was the deepest connection. And I found out that that was not accurate. Yeah, I mean, I think you touched upon the fact of like, what really is failure? You know, we talk about defining success, mm-hmm. defining hustle, but like, yeah, what really is failure? What constitutes a failure? Yeah, and I think yeah. that it's not the, this perception at least for myself, I can't speak for everybody, but I think it's a common perception that failure is the opposite of success. Right in this philosophical perspective of going beyond this black and white thinking, it can be a really profound awakening and realization to recognize how much we live in this duality Mm. and that failure is not the opposite of success, but rather a very essential ingredient for it. That's why at this point in my life right now, I try not to define myself by my failures or my successes. Mm. If I'm going to define myself by my successes, then I'm going to define myself by my failures as well. And then I will want to avoid failure. And failure is not what we perceive it to be. Failure is the, a, a, an opportunity, right. you know? And, and and I feel like we can easily get into these platitudes of like, failure is an opportunity and enjoy the journey, Sometimes you know, not the destination. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, and that is, that is the reality of it. I mean, like, it, that is very true. I mean, I think in my own, you know, I talk about recovery. You know, I'm a spiritual advisor mm-hmm. at a dual diagnosis recovery center, and I have worked in a lot of recovery. Uh, but when I think about recovery, 
I don't think necessarily about recovering from drugs and alcohol, but recovering into a deeper understanding of myself. Mm. And I think that uh, that's where I'm always working towards. To kind of build on what you were saying, um, with the spiritual awakening and and really, as you said, recovering into a greater understanding of yourself. Obviously, you know, you are a very spiritual person. And I love that you even on your website and Instagram call yourself a spiritual midwife. Somebody gave me that. I wish I remember who it was. With it, with it. That wasn't that wasn't mine. I was like, yeah, exactly. I love it. Like, Keep it. <laughs> um, how do you feel? You know, you said when you were into drugs and, and doing things that, you know, maybe weren't the best for your health and well-being. You said, you know, you thought you were on the spiritual path, but you might have kind of fallen off of it a little bit. How does spirituality fit inside your hustle, if we call it that? Do you see them as separate? Do they work hand in hand? Are they the same thing? Like, how do you work within your spirituality when it comes to building your career? I think it switches and changes. It's a a breathing, living entity in some way, like like life, where... um, I thought it was this and then I think I got it and I think I understand. And then I recognize it's the total opposite and then I have to come back to it from a different perspective and come back to the same thing like we've been kind of talking about. And so uh, I think for me, at least right now in my understanding of it, that my spirituality has to come first, mm. you know, in recovery, it's like anything you put before your recovery, you're going to lose. Mm. And sometimes I, I hate saying the typical things. You know, which is just my ego anyway, wanting to be like different or special, interesting in some way, you know, and and, and, and that's okay, too. It's Absolutely. Not and this, bad they're thing. typical for a reason, you know, some things. Do stand yeah, right. Exactly. Time. Because they <laughs> because they, they resonate, right. you know, and they and they make sense. So this idea of like anything you put before you recover, you're going to lose. I, I, I can understand that because for me, you know. The concepts that I work with when I when I speak about spirituality or God, I talk a lot about the difference between religion and spirituality. And for myself, you know, when we talk about recovery, particularly in the in the world of recovery and like twelve step recovery, uh, there's a lot of talk about God. But they they usually give the topic of the the concepts of God or higher power, and it's kind of brushed off. And like, but if you really break that down, it's not about God. This this God, you know, we all, we all have this relationship to that word some way. We have a relationship to that, whether it's beautiful, whether it's disgusting, whether it's awful, whether it was atrocious, you know, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I recognize that whether we're not talking about, we don't have to use that word, God. We use the word higher power, which is a power of my own. It's my higher power, a power of my own that is higher than anything I've ever encountered mm. before. And when I look at it that way, it is really about a connection to a deeper understanding of myself and the deepest aspect of myself. Now, I can get into philosophy of understanding that that self is the same self in all of us, and it is connection, and it is that singularity and all that, which is great, which is great stuff, you know, because otherwise it does become about ego if it really is just becoming a deeper understanding of myself in an isolated way. It's not really that. It's this paradox of becoming connected into my deeper self as it connects to everything. Right. And, and that could be a beautiful thing. But it really becomes about if I'm not connecting to that deeper space of myself, first and foremost, everything else is fucked. Mm-hmm. And, and that's basically yeah. it. So I can hustle all I want and I'm going to be lying on my deathbed miserable. Right. I don't I don't want to be having regrets. Yeah. I mean, or, or, or you know what? Or be I want to get to a place where I'm oh, I know that I'm going to have regrets and I'm going to be OK. With <laughs> yes. that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's the I, I like how you said that. I think that's the, the real truth there. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a, that's just accepting reality. That's just like, I think maturity and growing up and, you know, recognizing like no regrets. No, there's, I'm sure there's going to be regrets and it depends on what you define as regrets Definitely. if we learn from them and if, and if we grow, but to get back to the, the, the question at hand, you know, I think that it's, I, I need to put my spirituality first. If, if what we just define as spirituality is connection to a deeper yeah. self or something higher. Right. Right. And then, and then everything really actually falls into place, which really doesn't make much sense because it doesn't mean that it also doesn't mean that I'm going to be sitting in a room meditating for eight hours a day and not take care of right. life, you know, and that's where I kind of feel like that's where I say it could be in different ways of looking at it. Well, it's like, well, then, like you had mentioned that they are one and mm-hmm. the same in some way, because I do believe that, you know, the spirituality for me is not about an escape. Mm. You know, it's it's, you know, and I, and I can teach from Hinduism or Christianity or all these different places, you know, cause I, I love Christ. I think he's fantastic. I don't personally think he's my Lord and savior, 
but I think if you think he's your Lord right. and Savior, so now you have a psycho spiritual receptacle for all of your guilt, shame, and fear, mm. I think that's fucking fantastic. Right. right. But that is that I just don't believe that. So that therefore it's not going to work for me, which is uh, kind of what right. they say. You know, <laughs> like if you, you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior in order for it to be. And I'm like, oh, that actually logically, you know, makes sense. But from whatever perspective I'm teaching, I recognize the power of what it really is to be living a beautiful life that God or the connection to all or whatever it is, is, is here and now it's a, you know, the power of now it is, you know, I mean, the Christ said, you know, that the kingdom of heaven is here. It is mm -hmm. now. He didn't mean 2000 years ago. He's not talking about the end right. times. It's like the end, it's the end of the world as we know it, as we ascend into higher levels of consciousness is really what. I think the apocalypse is it's a personal apocalypse, mm. you know, as we move into higher places of understanding so that we can live a beautiful life as, as the ego is the death of the ego is really what happens in revelation. And as we do that, as a book of revelation, I'm getting biblical. Yeah, but, but it's fascinating. <laughs> Please continue. As we do that, you know, then it really becomes about living in this moment now, right? live in, in that heaven that is, is not, a place that you go after you die. Hell is not a place that you go after you die. These are states of mind. Well, These are states of and being. And I think you really hit upon it. I love it, like, not to sound cheesy and basic, but it's like, I want to put it on a t-shirt. When you were like, my spirituality isn't my escapism. It's it's intertwined with your present. It's part of, it. it's what you're doing. It's not to escape your life or it's not an exit ramp <laughs> that you're trying to, to get off on. It's, it's intertwined, as you were saying, with your spirituality and the hustle, you know, and your work. It's all this ever flowing, organic kind of intertwined thing. And it, everything you're, you're saying makes so much sense. I'm, I'm really resonating with so much of it. And, and if I could, I, I want to extrapolate on, on what you're saying a bit, because I know you've told me about, a book you've been working on. I know it's not published yet as of the time we are talking, but um, when you had told me the title and I, I said to you, oh, my, this is gold. Like This is the best. And before I share it with our listeners, I just want them to know it might take some by surprise and even rattle a few feathers, but that's what great art does. Um, and the title uh, you had said to me is Fuck God, the Spiritual Guide for asshole atheists and intellectuals. And so I'd love for you to break that down for us a bit and explain why you wrote this book, who you're trying to reach with it. Um, because I think it, it, it completely relates to everything that, that you're talking about right now. Uh, yeah, it definitely does. It's a very much a aspect of who I am and the way I live my life. Um, yeah, it is. It can be kind of a daunting title i think you know and i've i've wrestled with that within my own life it's like what am i really called to do and what kind of trouble am i kind of <laughs> you're just trying to cause shit or like are you actually being productive right. here you know and so i don't want to do shit just to cause shit and be different and and cause um you know for for shock value mm -hmm. or something like that and and i don't actually know how it will be perceived but that's not what the book mm -hmm. is the book is actually about getting a deeper connection into something. You know, I said that the, t the title of the book really should be fuck everything you think you know about God, right. which is actually based on other people's ignorance of divine principles that can truly change your right. life. Mm -hmm. And so when you ask uh, who is my target audience, I think it's anybody that is um, intelligent and struggling to find something deeper in their life and the meaning in their life. It, it did re where it really originally came from was when was working in recovery mm -hmm. and I would go into recovery centers. It hit me like there's people there that don't give a shit that they don't care about God and they don't want to hear about your spirituality and they don't want to hear about any of this crap, but they do really want to get better. Right. They really do want to get better. And, it, and if you go into a lot of 12 step mm -hmm. programs, like so I love 12 steps, but there's a lot of fucking bullshit in there right. too. There, there can be. I mean, you have to sift through it. I make a joke that the 12-step programs are kind of like shopping at TJ Maxx or Marshalls <laughs> because they uh, have a lot of great stuff in there and it's really cheap, but you have to sift through a lot of I was of just going to gonna say, but you got to find it. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you got to look. You know, and, and I, and I found it and it's there. And, you know, a lot of it was even my own perception of the shit because there's a lot of shit, but it's really just my own perception of it. That was, that was blocking me. But 
I can understand why a lot of people would not want to go to 12 steps. And when you're a you know 16 year old girl and you walk in and there's a 70 year old man being like, you better find God or you're going to fucking die. <laughs> right. You know, you're like, get the fuck. I don't want to go back to those meetings. Those feelings are terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like, so, so I believe that there's a block there more than just a lot of the, the um, some people in the rooms think, well, it's just because of your, your in willingness or your, your blocks or this and blah, 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 blah. And all this kind of right. stuff. It's kind of like, you and know, I'm just like, give it some time. You'll see. They all see. <laughs> like, well, right. And there's some truth sure. to that is like, you know, there's sayings of like, you know, keep coming until you want right. to come. And like, it is a, there is a transformation. The program you know, works if you if work you, it. Mm. It works if you work right. and all these different kinds right. of things we can go on forever. And, and, and some of it's really great, but some of it can also be really dysfunctional. So, uh, you know, I was recognizing that I had this really deep, profound connection to some spirituality, and I still get confused as to what is reality and what mm. is not. There's so many people that are, are pushed away from these programs that really could be getting help and that really would be getting help in there if there wasn't for the, there being a lot of dysfunction that, that is in right. there. So I'd be going into, into treatment centers and, you know, looking at people that are nowhere near the word God in their mm-hmm. life. Like they're just not even, and then they would say, well, you haven't hit your bottom and all this kind of stuff. Cause there is, there's times when you hit your bottom and you're like, fucking please anything God. And, the, and that's really the, the nature of suffering. And, you know, whether it be Buddhism or, you know, even in the yoga sutras is that, you know, it, it's, it's suffering that brings us you to the doorway. Right. And now yoga is the first one. It's like now, okay, you've done, you've done all the other shit and it doesn't work. Now you're coming to this, or it's the, the Christianity dark night of the soul. It really breaks you down into the place where that you are now open. You know, it's, it's the tragedy and, and that darkness that can actually break you open. It's the cracks through which the light comes in all that, you know, Leonard Cohen, good stuff or whatever. And um, so that happens, but there's some people that are nowhere fucking near that, that are really intelligent. And a lot of people would say that your intelligence actually gets in your mm-hmm. way, which is, tr- which is true. So I w- was noticing this and I was like, I was also had a very much opposed idea to religion and organized religion and the way the 12 steps, I mean, it is a Christian Christianity based right, thing, right. you know, which I do love a lot of the Christian teachings, but as a religion and in an organization, it can bother me. It can it also be very beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's not black and white either, right. you know, but you know, a lot of the ideas of like the, there's a lot of ignorance in just, in just blind belief and blind 100%. faith. And I don't believe in blind faith. I believe in questioning and looking and searching and understanding and coming to an understanding that you will never understand. Basically. Mm, so, yep. And those paradoxes. Yep. Right. But basically I'm, I'm beating around the bush to get to the point where I realized at this point that there were people in there and sitting there that didn't give a shit about me talking about God or anything like that. Yeah. And, and it was just, and this word really turned them off to really a lot of wonderful things that if you talk about it in a scientific way, or you talk about it in a different way, they'd be like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you know? Right. And so like, and when I, when I realized the whole higher power thing, and when I recognize what we're talking about here is not some God that says you should and have to behave this way, and you're going to become a goody two shoes and a high roller and holy roller in order to recover and give up everything that you ever thought was cool and good and awesome. That's not the case. What you're really talking about is getting into your own individual fucking higher power, a power of your own that is higher than anything you've ever encountered before that can make you into something that is strong and powerful, right? That you surrender. What it really is is surrendering your mind, Mm. which is and this identity that we think we have into a higher identity of ourselves. But that's like doing that is insane. I mean, it's incredible amount of work to actually again, it's the book of revelation it is the death of the ego. It's the, it's the death of the world as we know it. It's a, it's a huge transformation as a bitch. Right. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and in terms of that journey of surrendering, you know, what I really love about the, the kind of interwoven themes of everything you've discussed with us today is, you know, a lot of redefining many different terms, not just hustle, but redefining your perspective, redefining what your, why your purpose is or connection is to a certain belief or to a certain program, um, structure, whatever you might want to, to name it. What I'm really hearing also too, is, you know, as, as you said, your, um, your perception of it, your perspective on it, you know, mindset is such a powerful thing. And what I love what you're doing and what you seem to be doing with your book is saying like, listen, like, let's get, let's get all the picky little nuances out of there that maybe you don't like or don't resonate with, but let's look at it in terms that you do understand or that you can connect with. 
and really have a conversation about about spirituality, about getting to know your deeper self and both, as you said, yourself and the collective self. Um, and, and I think that's such an important thing for people to do, not only for their overall health and, and a greater experience and connection into their life, um, but also for their mental health. And one of the things mm-hmm. that I wanted to touch upon, you know, you and I crossed paths at, um, at an industry event, I believe it was Millennium, uh, but it, there's, mm-hmm. we've crossed paths a few times, but particularly um, at a mental health and wellness panel um, just the other year, a number of years ago, um, as I was trying to, you know, get to more events and, and, and kind of network more industry events, mental health and wellness was not something that the industry was even willing to make time for and discuss. Um, and so I'm wondering, as you talk about getting to know the deeper self, questioning things, looking at things in new perspectives, taking what you do like about something and, and, and not feeling like you have to take the whole message on if certain pieces of it don't resonate with you. All of that to me is really taking care of your well-being and your mental health uh, and, al- and finding that alignment within yourself. And so why do you feel um, it's so important to amplify this conversation? You know, mental health is, su- is such a big piece of your messaging and, and what you put out there. Why do you feel that it's important to to discuss it rather than it just be your own personal journey? There's a great anecdote uh, in recovery. You know, an addict falls in a hole and the priest comes along and says, I'll say a prayer for you and walks away. And the family comes along and says, we're here to support you and whatever you need and walks away. And then... um, therapist comes along and says, tell me about your childhood and then walks away. And only an addict jumps in the hole with the the other addict and says, don't worry, I know how to get out of here. Once you go to hell and you know what it's like to be in there and you remember, and you know, and you get out of there with the help of other people or whatever, however it is that you get out. um, And you know that there are people trapped back there. You know, I can't, I, I have to go back. And, you know, there's lessons within that too. It's like at my own, not at the cost of my own health or my own recovery. You know, those are lessons you have to learn too in, in recovery and stuff like that. And, and you know, I, I think that you, you start to look at why you even want to be of service. That's a whole nother mm-hmm. level. But I think that is that is a, an essential element of when you recognize that, wait a minute, I know I can, I can, I can help people. And it's not about from an ego, egoistic perspective, but understanding that, oh, if I had this information, if I had this knowledge, then it might have made my path a little bit smoother mm. and a little bit easier. Definitely. You know? you know, you had mentioned coming from a place of service, and there's so many different ways to serve. And, you know, as a spiritual advisor, as, as a consultant, as a spiritual midwife, as all the different hats that you wear, you know, it's impossible to help everybody but you also wear many other hats as a creative and one of them is being a musician and music has such a healing power. And so I I didn't want to leave this conversation without also touching upon your creative endeavors and your, and the music that you put out there. Um, you know, you, you had mentioned to me when we spoke the least of thieves project that you've got in the works. And I'd love to hear about that because I think that's going to serve a lot of people in its own way as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about that project? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's been uh, like 30 years in the making. (laughs) At least one of the songs I wrote like 22 years Mm -hmm. ago or something like that. You know, for so much of my musical career, I've had these uh, really wonderful experiences and opportunities, you know, being signed to Capitol Records, being signed to Victory Records, and all these really amazing dreams uh, come true. And, and some of them, you know, dashed at the sure. same time, and you're not, they're not what you think they are, and that kind of, you know, that right. whole story. And, but within all of that, as a bass player in the band, I always felt that I was a sergeant on someone else's battlefield instead of a general on my own, just feeling like I wasn't really living my purpose in some way. Mm. So now this is really kind of like, you know, with all these amazing opportunities and records that I've got to record over the years, this is now really something that is coming from me, 
coming from purpose. Mm. And, and like I said, originally that my finding my purpose to be of service through my artistry, Absolutely. you know, and, and where that comes from when you're coming from a deep, true place, as opposed to, you know, either worrying about what people want to hear or how it should sound, you know, and all that whole nonsense, but also then even worrying about, is it going to be of service and trying to be of right. service? Like, fuck that right. too. Just actually create from your space of bliss, right. you know? And, and and let that be what emanates from you. And, and if it speaks to people, it speaks well, to people. Well, and as you said before, with the addiction recovery, you know, the person who's been through it, jumping into the hole and helping that person find the way out, service is sharing your truth and sharing your experience. And as you said, who's ever going to take something from it can take something from it. That is service. And it doesn't have to be manufactured in a specific way. You don't have to predict or be a psychic about what people need. You just have to share your own experiences and, and your own truth as you know it to be at the moment. Because as you said, there's the self, but there's also the collective self. And so even though we are all unique unicorn butterflies, we are also still all human beings that for the most part are going to go through similar things at some point in time. So, you know, you sharing something that you worked on 22 years ago and have developed it over time and, and putting it through the perspective you have now, that's going to serve somebody. And I'm sure many, many people. I, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, on, on a more uh, mundane level, uh, just the details of it is that it's been pretty cool because I've brought in, you know, for, I was with Catch-22 Catch and Streetlight Manifesto, which were a lot of horns mm -hmm. in the band and um i brought in so sort of working with guys from those those bands my original bands and stuff like that and putting in horns into the mm -hmm. songs and you know i've always had such a love of all kinds of music like i'm really all over the place you know um i just love music there's good and good and bad of aspects of all kinds of music mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of hard because it, it it has a lot of influence in all these different spaces and so like trying to figure out how it's all going to work together and because i want to i want to create all these different right. things you know but and and just allowing that to be what it is too and allowing it to be like okay this is this is from me there's the cohesion is that it's from me and and you know that there's a there, there's something as just being a part of that all that together that will hold it sure. together you know so we'll see, we'll see about that, but it's been really exciting to, you know, it's been, it's been several years in the making and, um, it, it's been cool. I, you know, I've been working on it with, um, Joey Papa, mm -hmm. Joseph Papa is his name. He's great, great engineer and mixer and, uh, from, uh, human zoo, which is a band that I just, I just actually directed their music well, video recently. That just yep. That out. was, that was going to be my next question in terms of when you said, I like to create many different things. You certainly have a uh, many hats on your head <laughs> and, and I'm curious about that music video for the human zoo. Can you describe the feeling of kind of switching hats and going from musician and author and spiritual healer and all of these things to music video director it's do you feel that you are switching hats is it all one and the same for you how do you manage all of these different endeavors that's he a great question a secret. no <laughs> it's interesting to like actually hear you just put it in that way i was like you're like i thought it was all know. one just... big job <laughs> I just kind of just right, do, right. you know, uh, and, and, and funnily enough, I never think I'm doing enough. Well, and so. as you're not overthinking it and you're like, I wake up today, what am I working on? That might just be better. Yeah. I, I, I think that there's a cohesion and a unity in, in just the creative process, mm -hmm. I think, you know, and there's something that is in, in being creative. I, 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 I do kind of just feel like that it is all kind of just one thing that I'm, that I'm doing. There's really, I think that the core of it is actually kind of storytelling. I was going to say, yeah, the fact that you can find that, that thread, as you mm -hmm. said, you know, you've mentioned service and, and as you just said, storytelling, I think for a lot of our multi-passionate creatives out there that are afraid to take their passions full time because you know, oh, it's not focused I'm I love so many different things. But as you just said, if you can find that core, um, I think that's what keeps somebody like yourself from, from just going everywhere, but forward, you're able to move forward because it's all connected to a greater thing. Is that, do I have that right? Yeah, I think, I think so. You know, whether you put on a, a piece of, you know, uh, 
music or you put on film or you, you know, go to some sort of yoga workshop. It's really, there's so much of it that is like feeling like you belong in some way and feel and identifying again, it's about that connection. And they say the opposite of, you know, uh, addiction is not recovery, but it's, it's connection. Wow. Yeah. Right. And so like, so really working into a connection in some way. So I think that there's at a core of that, there is some sort of, you know, be it in, it, I love the storytelling and I love that aspect of it, but even within that, it's about bringing us to a sense of connection in some way and, and returning not to sound cheesy, but like returning yeah. home, you know, and, and, and what, what that home, but that feeling of home actually is, you know, in some way. I, I um, love this conversation so much because it's, I mean, the perspective shifting and the redefining of, and there, it just opened my eyes to so many different terms and perceptions and, and thought processes that we might want to redefine in our own lives. I've just loved so much about this conversation. And before we wrap up, I'd love to know, you know, you've mentioned the spiritual awakening from years back, but I know you've experienced so much in life. Maybe it's the spiritual awakening you had, maybe it's something different, but I'd love to know what is a redefining moment in your career or life that you're comfortable to share with us here today that might inspire our listeners. A redefining moment in my life was when I really hit bottom and had to re identify and re understand myself on a deeper mm. level than even my artistry. When I defined myself as an artist and when I could not create as an artist, be it for whatever reason, whether it's, whether it's like I'm not sustaining myself as an artist or emotionally or mentally, I couldn't create or whatever it was, um, then who the hell was I? And what am I without this artistry? And and I was something, there was something deeper without this artistry. So that was a real defining, redefining moment that when I gave that up, now I've come back to it with a more sense of wholeness and completeness. Mm. So that the, the that it doesn't define me. Um, so that was a, that was a huge moment of me for me. It was like this stripping down of my entire identity uh, when I felt like I had completely failed right. as an artist. And but there was a there was a fun story though. A couple a year or so before that, where I was working in a restaurant in Los Angeles, I really wanted to be following my my passion, and I just felt really mm. stuck. And this this guy walked into the restaurant and. The way he walked in, I, I, I don't even know what the hell it was, <laughs> but the way he walked, the way he carried himself, he caught my attention and was just like, what is, what is this? <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. And I, I, was, it was, I was so moved mm. by it that I actually went up to him. He was at my table and I went up to him and I was like, uh, I just want to tell you, this might sound kind of strange, but... Um, when, as soon as you walked in, the way you carried yourself, the way you walked, the way you even spoke when I when I spoke to you, uh, you just really seemed like a man like I, that I would want to emulate wow. as I grow into being a man myself. Wow. And um, I don't know why I was compelled to yeah. say that. And he was like, you know, wow, like that's thank you so much for for sharing that. And as we continued on the conversation, he was like, you know, I have. I came here, I think it, I can't remember where it was from, like Switzerland or something like that. It was somewhere over there. And he's like, I came here with $5,000 in my pocket and, you know, a dream. And, you know, I sat with many different men that I respected and admired and try to understand myself on deeper levels. And that led to me sitting at a table, you know, with the production company offering me a million dollars for my script to, to buy my script. And I told them no. Wow. And I was like, wow, man, that's, that's pretty impressive. And, you know, me personally, I've always had, I've had experiences where I've had major, major label contracts and stuff sure. like that. And I thought about, you know, the times are so different now. Anyway, I wouldn't really want to go near a major right. label contract, <laughs> right. but, but I was like, if, you know, if, if a really good major label contract came my way, would I really even want to do that? You know? Um, and I was like, could I, could I turn it down with the, and, and for the, for the other people in the band, you know, what's best for everybody when you're a leader and have to actually, you know, support mm -hmm. everyone and think about everybody involved and make those kinds of choices. And it's like, that was, that's really amazing. And then he handed me, when he was done, he handed me his black American express card. And I was like, oh shit, like who is this <laughs> fucking guy? And I went and looked him up and he actually did refuse that, that offer and started his own production company and actually had people from that other production company 
join him on the board of his wow. company and get behind him. And now here he is offering me his Black American Express card. And on the, on the way out, as he left, he was like, here's my information, you know, on your journey. He's like, your journey is your own, but whatever it is, you know, um, I'll help you if there's any way that I can. And then he, then he walked out and I went right up to my boss and told him I quit. Wow. Talk about connection. <laughs> Yeah, it was, and and I'd never seen the guy That's again. Amazing. Actually, nothing ever like came of that. But it was like, it just completely inspired me to be like, I got to make this move. I, I quit, and I, you know, I I quit my job. I quit drinking. I quit smoking. Sold all my shit. Went vegan. Moved to Mexico, and then started to make this film. And all this stuff was happening. Right, right. You know, and it's in some ways still right. happening. And then I still had a lot of shit to work through. Like sure. I said, because I hit fucking bottom after that. But that was part of my journey. That was, you know, and so that was a huge moment where it was like I, I the guy blew in like a fucking ghost and just he hit me in a way that I don't even I can't even believe I even said right. that to the guy. And it turned out that he was doing, you know, he wasn't like, well, yeah, I went to dentistry <laughs> school and, you know, like he turned out doing exactly what right. I wanted to be doing. I mean, it's a, it's oh a lie, but, but even but it even still to be that successful right. in it and what he was doing and and that that the way he just the way he walked was what mm. hit me like it was just the way he carried yeah. himself and i was like wow there's something different about this mm-hmm. guy you know and he wasn't sitting there drinking a beer he was sitting there you know drinking yeah. water oh, i have chills you know, and- that's i mean hey listen on the serendipitous chance that man is listening here today sir hats off to <laughs> you and uh thank you for the service that you uh that you bestowed upon joshua here um, that, that's really an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. That's so great. I really, I literally could sit here and talk to you all day. This has been so fascinating and thank you so much for talking with us. Yeah. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And thank you everyone for listening. So how are we feeling over there? I know it's a lot to digest. So I hope you were able to take a few things away from this conversation and reflect on some of your own beliefs around your own limitations and how you define your own journey. Everyone's journey is unique. Whether you're struggling with addiction or you feel trapped by your own fear of failure, we all struggle to overcome something in our life and it's important to find whatever spiritual or mindful practice works for you to bring you peace and reflection as well as the ability to be present in your own mind and body. In addition to Joshua's resources, I've left a few links in the show notes below this video to organizations and websites that can provide additional support as you go through your own journey. I hope this episode has served you well, and be sure to let us know in the comments below what you've taken away from today's episode. I'll see you next week for another installment of Redefine the Hustle. In the meantime, take care.